Dana is still a menace. August is kind of losing it until she's not. And Bridget's going to jail. Like, what is actually happening? What's good, y'all? It's your good sis, Erica Bain. Coming to you right here on Erica Bain TV with another Kings of Napa video. In this video, we are talking about episode six, Mo Bottled Blues, that premiered last night. So without further ado, let's go ahead and just get into it. So the bulk of this episode really centers around Dana, August, Bridget, Vanessa, and Melanie all getting trapped and a part of the vineyard. There's a storm that is brewing. They're trying to prepare the vines so that things don't, don't get ruined. And ultimately the lights go out, shutting down. The main generator goes down. One of the immediate threats is one of the fermentation systems is actually going to suffer. If the temperature raises too high and fermentation stops, that's going to wind up ruining one whole brand of their wine. I believe it's the Merlot. But the bigger thing <laughs> that's happening, because they're not focused on, you know, the business. It's too much of the personal business business that has all types of messiness all around it the bigger thing that's happening is like Bridget gets everybody to come to this space because she wants answers about the grandmother being in the insane asylum or the I believe she's in the insane, insane asylum and I'm like okay Bridget I get that you're pissed because your mother lied to you your aunt finally revealed it to you but this is not a call on an emergency family meeting in the middle of a damn storm type of news this is a we need to have dinner and let's have a conversation about this when we have some free time because there's no imminent danger or there's no pressing nature to the fact that your grandmother is actually not in Paris but she's actually committed to a mental facility sis she's still gonna be there she's gonna be there tomorrow she's gonna be there tonight she's gonna be there next week because your aunt while she wanted to show you make sure that you knew how raggedy your mother was which we come to find out that your mother really isn't raggedy because there's a whole story behind that she also didn't say that she's gonna take the lady up out of there so like what are you actually confronting them about like <laughs> this episode started off so well weird to me like them getting trapped in there I'm like okay so more things are gonna come out they start off with the whole thing about the grandmother but then we get the story from Melanie like oh no their mother is the one who actually pushed the father back and he hit his head on the coffee table and had an aneurysm so this whole time everybody was thinking that Melanie was the one that killed their dad by accident but all, but it really was the mother and the mother has lost her mind ever since then because she couldn't handle the guilt and then Melanie ran off and whole time Vanessa is resenting her about this so all of this stuff starts to come out they start to purge the only person who is still brewing the entire time there is so much healing and release and forgiveness that's happening in this room it takes a while but it is happening in this room the only person who refuses to let go of his grudge is Dana the menace okay so Dana is playing coy playing cute all the way up until the end of the episode where he gets Bridget arrested once they finally get out of this dang on room because he believes that she is the person who's extorting the family I don't actually believe that I think that Bridget has a little attitude to her she's coming a little hard every now and again but I don't think that she's actually the one extorting the family and here goes Dana again trying some craziness and then history starts to repeat itself because we get a flash like so at the very start of this episode we get this scene the scene of Bridget in this police car Melanie is having a seizure and everybody doesn't know what's actually going on by the end of the episode we get the context of how that actually happens and then we get to rewatch it so basically the police officer pushes her back she falls and hits her head while they're trying to put Bridget into the police car and I'm just like wow literally your father's story just recreated itself right here and it's all because of this little menace Dana and he looks like he don't have no remorse not an ounce now I get it she kissed your wife and she also told your wife that she has known that the y'all's dad was her dad this entire time but come on Dana now you about to kill your aunt and you having her get arrested like come on sir I'm gonna need you to give it a rest I just I just thought I thought for a split second this episode that we were gonna get a break from Dana that Dana was going to take the day off he was not going to have any kind of menacing activities Rose is missing so I thought that maybe that put a little something up under him to like calm it down she decides to run off to New York where she's supposed to be here giving a PR presentation for the dessert wine and then initially he's lying but then he winds up revealing that she's gone and he can't actually find her and I'm just like so then also what happened with that because the last time that we saw her she was kissing Bridget and then ran out he was watching on the security camera last episode and then we see nothing in between and now she's just missing 
minute action. Okay. Y'all, this episode was so daggone messy. August is like trying her best to hold it together. And I'm just like, girl, thank God y'all own a vineyard because you need a slow drip of wine at all times to deal with your family. Ultimately, she becomes a voice of reason. She gets everybody to start to forgive each other, you know, aside from Dana, and to just release the things that have happened in the past. But it takes a while to get there. She's stressed about the temperature of this wine and the fermentation process. She's annoyed that her mother lied and basically abandoned them for however many months so she can go pursue her dream. She's annoyed that her mother has placed pressure on her about having children when she really cares about her career and she doesn't want or need that added pressure. Like all of these things come out and I think that it's actually beautiful how they had this conversation. Like it's so dope. Like I don't necessarily, my grandmother is a little bit more like this, not my mother of like, when am I going to get married? When am I going to have kids? But I really love that they were having this conversation just in August talking about making certain career choices and delaying the childbearing process because that's some place that I fall into you know just a similar type of thing and I love when I can really relate to the media it's like I'm definitely or have in the past waited and have tried to do certain things within my career and it's hard and August's conversations to her mother of like you added all this extra pressure on me to do something and come to find out you felt this 110% but you actually chose something else you actually had the, had us and then left because you really felt like you were sacrificing yourself in your career and you were completely unhappy so why in the hell would you wish this on me to just go out and have a kid when you know I'm flourishing within my career where you know I'm trying to make certain ambitious goals and stretches and trying to do certain things like why would you do that and the way that she put it I was just like exactly how many mamas across the world need to hear it like stop pressuring your daughter to have these daggone kids she's gonna do it when she does it and then on top of that like there's a conversation around okay when you're getting older you need to hurry up and do it and then also there's a conversation around if you make a cognitive decision to not have children right and then you don't meet the partner or you don't actually wind up having children that's something else that she got to deal with but she got, she saddled with all of your pressure on her back about with all of your narrative of what she should do and how she should do it it's like girl give it a rest because you also raggedy and that was probably my favorite moment of the whole episode like listening to august really break it down to her mother and check her mother like you literally got to make this quote-unquote mistake double back <laughs> and run off and then you came back and were able to you know fix it and they didn't even notice that she was gone so it happened that when they were so young but like you got to go through all of these things so the fact that you have this perspective and you're literally putting all this pressure on me is ridiculous and you need to cut it out and you need to cut it out today and i'm like tell her what it is and what it ain't august period <laughs> like august is definitely my fave on this whole entire show can't nobody mess with my august and that's on period like i absolutely adore her i'm praying to god that her little boo that she have is not shifty because i don't necessarily know what's going on with him but for right now we riding with it i want her to be happy and i'm so glad that she was able to make well almost make it out of this episode stress-free because cradling your aunt's head as she has a seizure and your cousin sister is in the cop car flipping out is not a way <laughs> to be unstressed however this just adds more fuel to the fire of they that she needs to deal with Dana he cannot be left to his own devices he cannot be still in a position of power within an organization he needs to be isolated and removed because he is a detriment at every turn to everybody and at this point they cannot afford to continue to deal with his shenanigans and that's period the moment that the two sisters finally can get to a place of forgiveness Vanessa finally forgives Melanie for sleeping with her husband and having a baby behind her back and now the lady is going to the hospital having a seizure hopefully she doesn't lose her life behind this but like all because Dana is doing what continuing to be a menace I can't all right y'all that is my breakdown for episode six of the kings of Napa on own if you're new hit the subscribe button turn on your bell notification and then jump down in the comment section and let me know what you thought of the episode from last night also let me know what you're thinking about this series thus far i cannot wait to chat with you in the comment section down below and i'll see you in the next one bye